Are we live? <clears throat> Looks like we're live. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Zuzi session. How about that? I bet you didn't expect that you do it. So uh, let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. So let me grab my Discord server. And let's do the usual ritual. Uh, Red Circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch? Today we are uh, drawing triangle in C. Uh, that, that, that's literally what we're doing today. So <laughs> twitch.tv slash sodding. And I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. So I still have not adjusted my sleeping schedule. So that means at the time of streaming, I'm falling asleep. So yeah, I should have not streamed today at all, but uh, I feel like I need to stream, right? So we, we need to continue developing this library. So uh, forgive me if I completely fall asleep during the stream. So yeah, uh, today we're going to continue developing the, uh, you know, the simple 2D graphics library for C that doesn't really have any third party dependencies. And it just like renders everything into the memory that you give to it. Right, so you allocate some region of memory for, for the image of a certain size and you can call, uh, draw that primitive into that memory, draw this primitive into the memory, and then uh, you get a sequence of pixels that you can do whatever you want with, right? So you can save it to a file, you can maybe render it on a screen, right? So maybe you can even animate it, I didn't think about that, right? So essentially you can actually... Uh, use that for like real-time animations like um, you know software uh, for software and rendering that will be actually kind of interesting so that's what you can do so we implemented a, a couple of like simple primitives we implemented rectangles lines uh, circles right so and one of the things that I wanted to implement is triangles right because triangles are cool right so if you can render triangle you can render pretty much anything because you can take any shape, right, and then just like, you know, tessellate it. I think that's the term people use it, like to tessellate it into triangles and then like draw triangles, right? So you can just, uh, you can just do whatever. So um, let's go ahead and try to do that. Um, let's go ahead and try to do that. So let me, uh, let me open the library, right? And uh, we have some stuff in here, so I think I don't need that stuff anymore. I'm gonna do uh, git clean fdx, right? And I'm gonna fetch the latest stuff. So there you go, we're fetching the latest stuff. I'm a robot, thank you so much for 35 um, months of tier one subscription. That's a lot, thank you so much. And welcome back to our epic. What kind of club over today? Is, right, it's a sleepy club. Right, so because I'm falling asleep. All right. So and uh, let me merge everything. Merge um, origin master, and let me rebuild everything. So off screen, I developed like a simple uh, testing framework, uh, right? And as we implement triangles, I'm going to be adding tests to that. Uh, to that framework as well. Uh, so this is a like very simple executable. And I implemented the usual paradigm that I like with uh, the unit tests, right? So if you just call uh, the tests, it just like, you know, check the tests. And then if you changed something uh, within the library, you can actually do record and it updates all of the test cases, right? So basically this is how it works. Uh, right, so when we have different test cases uh, for drawing line, right, so as you can see, this is a very small image to that, you know, tests uh, how to draw a line, uh, right, so we also have a fill circle, like we have different cases, for instance, here, like, you know, out of bounds and negative uh, radius and stuff like that. And also we have the, uh, the rectangles, right, so the usual stuff. Uh, Pituna, uh, I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. Thank you so much for seven months of tier one subscription. Pog, indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome back to Epic Club. All right. So let me uh, let me see. This is actually kind of cool. For instance, uh, what if I like change something in one of the test cases? So. Test cases are literally these functions. 
And uh, what I do in these functions, I just like draw things with them and then they are used for recording and replaying uh, of the test cases. Uh, for instance, I can try to maybe change the color uh, of the of one of the lines. So maybe like I draw another line. Let's actually try to draw another line that is vertical that goes uh, straight through the center and see how the test, um, test framework will react to that. So I'm gonna provide pixels, height, and it should start in the middle. So it has to be width divided by two. In terms of height, it's gonna be just zero. And then the second point is also that, and then the height. And let's actually make it maybe green, right? So we're gonna put some sort of like a green, uh, green line over that. And if I try to do this kind of thing, uh, it should tell me that, yeah, there you go. Uh, so it said, for this specific test case, we have unexpected pixels in generated image, and it also generated an image div, right? And what's interesting about that, uh, this image div is that uh, the pixels with a certain color, uh, which is purple in this case, are the ones that differ from the expected ones. So if we take a look at, uh, at this specific image in here, you see, like I drew the green line uh, through the center, and this is the div which shows me like what is unexpected, right? And it says that this line of pixels is unexpected, right? So, and what is actually expected instead is this thing, right? So, as you can see, it not only tells me that there is discrepancy, it also creates like the image div, uh, right? That basically shows you what pixels are, like, you know differ so i think maybe at some point i'm gonna actually add like customization of the uh you know of the div color right now it's a bright purple maybe depending on the image you want to use a different color uh right and then you can say okay so maybe this is exactly what i want and i can say um just accept this as how it is right so i'm gonna do record uh right so it recorded if i take a look at the test of this thing and as you can see this is the expected stuff uh right and then i can do it again and everything passes so this is the usual like a paradigm where i do not draw um, i do not maybe draw i do not create the test cases manually what i do is that uh, well i mean i i do actually create them manually yeah I, I just i just create the code that renders the image but i don't really uh think about too much about uh modifying the expected output and stuff like that i just have the a single command that just records the current behavior and this is the the current behavior right now right so i don't have to craft all of that like manually you know what i mean it's kind of similar to how i did that in porth so uh what we're gonna do um we need to render the triangle right as i already said so to render a triangle we need to define some sort of api for rendering the triangle so when a triangle is just like a three points right so let's create a, a simple function uh, I'll leave it, uh, fill triangle, right, and uh, of course we're going to accept the canvas, which is going to be um, in 32 pixels, right, we accept the pointer to the pixels, and we also should accept width and height of the canvas on which we're drawing everything, right, that makes sense. And now we need to accept three points for the triangle, right, so this is going to be x1, y1, right. So then we're gonna have x2, y2, x3, y3. And then we're gonna accept the color. Mm, I'm gonna accept the color. Uh, so no on topic questions as usual, all right. Um, so how are we gonna actually render the triangle? How are we gonna render the triangle? So the easiest thing to render a triangle, like the thing that I have in mind, right, so there's probably some sort of like a fancy algorithm that is uh, taught in all of the computer science courses and stuff like that. Like, I don't care, I give a shit about that. I want to come up with something my, on my own, right? So because I, uh, if I come up something with on my own, that means I understand that thing. And understanding that thing, is actually very powerful right people try to treat 
uh, code, usually algorithm, but by extension code as black box. And they're being really proud of themselves because they saving time. Right. Look, I'm being so smart. I don't have to spend time understanding this black box. Right. I can just reuse it and be super efficient. But I don't think it works exactly like that. It, it does work like that to some extent. But this is not a full picture, in my opinion. Here is an interesting thing. If you know how this black box works, right if you know how it works you can actually understand what is um, needed for your specific case in that black box and what is not needed so you can actually simplify it and by extend uh, you know make your application more robust right so essentially um, by understanding the black box you have more information the more information you have the more things you can do Right. The less information you have, the less things you can do. It's kind of interesting. People think that by having less information, they're doing more, which is not necessarily 100% true. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, and because of that, I want to come up with something on my own, which I understand because then I have more information and the more information I have, the more things I can do. Right. <clears throat> so, all right. So, uh, let's assume that we have a triangle, right? Let's assume that we have a triangle. And what's interesting is that I think it uh, comes down to the, uh, line formula, right? Uh, so what we're gonna do, so maybe I'm gonna say P1, uh, P2, P3. So this is three points that we have in here. Um, interestingly, uh, what we can do, we can find the, um, the line equation for this line and for this line. And that will give us enough information to actually feel some of the parts of the triangle. So what is the line formula, right? It's y equal k multiplied. It's actually really weird k. Uh, just a second, where is that? So k multiplied by x plus, um, I don't remember, I think c. So I know that different people just call these parameters like differently, right? I personally don't care. You, you get the idea what I'm trying to say in here. Uh, right, and what's interesting is that we can find um, these two parameters for this line and for this line. Right, so we can have, um, I don't know how to call them, to be fair. Uh, I can maybe, um, maybe I can call it like a one, two. Right, in that case, uh, for, for, for this thing, we can have like um, k, one, two, and c, one, two. And then we can have, um, <clears throat> k13 and c13 right for this one so uh what we can do like we know that second point is here at the center so what we can do we can move from the y position of p1 to the y position of p2 right so we're iterating through all of the y's in here and since we know these parameters, right, since we know these parameters, we can find the x on both of these lines in here, right? So I'm iterating y, and by extent, uh, I can find x for this line, x for this line, and x for this line. And I can draw a line from here. And that way, I can actually sort of uh, rasterize this triangle line by line. Right, because I can always find these two points by knowing why, because I know these constants. You know what I mean? You see what I mean? Right. So, and I can feel this part of the triangle. Right. And another interesting is, thing is that this is only half of a triangle. And then you can repeat the same thing for this part. Right, you can find uh, essentially k to three and C to three and like fill this part of the triangle. 
right? So, see what I mean? Right. Does it make sense? Does it make sense, chat? If P3 was closer to P1, I think uh, what we have to do first is to sort the points by Y, right? So, yeah, literally before we try to do anything, like let's sort all of them by Y and assume that the second one is going to be in the middle, right? Because if they're sorted, the second one is also always going to be in the middle, right? That's a good question, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so and the question is how we're going to be sorting all of that? How we're going to be sorting all of that? So if, uh, well, it will be kind of, kind of cool. Mm -mm. Sort triangle points by Y, <laughs> right? Uh, and essentially, I suppose I can do X one uh, Y one, right? And uh, let's copy paste all of that. Let's copy paste all of that in here. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be two, this is going to be three. Uh, there you go. So triangle points by Y. And then after that, we can safely assume that uh, the second one is always at the center. It is always at the center. Mm -mm. Okay, so let's continue. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be pointers, and this is going to be pointers. Oh, right. And uh, I'm probably going to hard code this entire thing, right? So if uh, y, let's actually, you know, this one, y is greater than uh, y2, we probably want to swap them. And we want to swap actually both of them. Interestingly, is that we have already a thing that swaps stuff, uh, stuff around. And I'm thinking... Uh, can I utilize that already? Because this is a point, is that means if I want to swap things around, I will have to do it like that, right? Y1, uh, Y2, and I have to do axis as well. Speaking of why I might pass an axis, right? Because I want to swap both of them. Does it make sense? Maybe? I don't know. All right, so now... Uh, I want to do the same thing for 2, 3, right? So essentially what I want to do here is to emulate bubble sort, right? So, and since uh, I have only three points, uh, I can basically hard code the entire bubble sort, right? So P1, P2, P3. So first I need to check this pair, right? I need to check this pair and swap it if needed. And then I need to check this pair and swap it if needed. And after that, the biggest value should be at the end in here. And then I'll have to check this thing one more time, right? Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. Huh. Two, three, and this one is going to be two, Three, and then I need to check this thing uh, one more time. And this is probably the most efficient way to sort like three points, right? So there's no point in like spinning up the whole um, quick sort algorithm or anything like that. So I think it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty fast way to do that. What do we think? What do we think? It would be kind of cool to actually test this entire stuff, right? And just see if it actually works or not. So I, I think I think I want to do that. Uh, but I'll have to do that somewhere in the example, right? So let me put this thing in here. So this is going to be main. And uh, let's just define all of these things in here, right? Let's just define them. <clears throat> so maybe I'm gonna do some stuff like that. Uh, X, uh, for X I'm gonna do 69 for 20, uh, 69 for 20, right? So this is what we have in here. In terms of Y, uh, let's actually make Y's sorted properly, right? So 
Uh -huh. And then what I want to do, I want to actually print this entire thing. Um, so x1 d y1 d x1 y1 uh, something like that and then I can clear place one to two and then I can clear place one to three there we go so if I now build the entire thing so we have a couple of stuff here that is not particularly used so it complains about that but maybe I should not care um, so I also run the tests, so let me disable the tests, I don't think tests are particularly useful in here, uh, it actually, yeah, it actually did that twice, but that's fine. So here is the thing, right, so here is the point, uh, what if I now just call that thing, uh -huh. actually call it somewhere here, yeah. so as you can see, it stayed, uh, you know, as, as it was. Now I'm going to actually swap these two things, right? And see if it will try to sort them properly. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, it actually sorted them. So we can try to do some other things, right? So maybe this is going to be three, this is going to be two, um, right? So it seems to be working. Uh, three, two, one, completely like opposite thing. Right. So, and here's an interesting thing. This is literally bubble sort, right? This is literally bubble sort, and it's probably the the most efficient way to actually sort these three points, right? So people think that bubble sort is so slow and so dumb, you should never use it, but it's not true. You should use things like bubble sort, insertion sort, like you know, the square. Uh, oh, you know, square certain algorithm when you have like a very small data on a very small data They actually work better than merge sort quick sort or any of these n log n uh, Sorts because all of these like fast source. I mean, they, they're they actually fast um, All of them they have like additional cost, right? So That only pays off when you're dealing with like a lot of data all right, so now, since I sorted everything, right, since I sorted everything, it should be fine. So what I need to do is um, I need to find the corresponding parameters for these two points, right? Valigo, hello, what's up, what's up, how are you doing? Really glad to see you. Um, so, but the question is, how can I find all of that? Because I keep forgetting the line formula. <laughs> Uh, this is my like biggest problem uh, is that I keep forgetting the line formula and I wonder if I can actually capture that um, Something like if I have a function uh, Oh, by the way Since it's a part of the library. I should probably prefix this entire thing with the uh, olivets uh, Like so right and that should actually work Good, good. Hope you're fine too. I'm actually okay. Uh, I'm actually okay. Mm, so it would be nice to have a function, right? Line of segment, right? Where this thing would accept the segment and then return the k uh, and C parameters, but you, you have to be careful. You have to be careful because if the x1 is equal to x2, you end up with division by zero. So maybe because of that, this thing is going to return uh, return that. So we're gonna start with calculating the dis uh, difference between them. Right, so we will already have a formula in here, that's for sure. So maybe I'm gonna actually start copy pasting this entire step. And for instance, if dx is not equal to zero, we're gonna do something in here. Uh, by the way, c has to be a pointer. Otherwise, we're gonna simply return false. Might as well actually do the following thing. If this thing is equal to zero, we're gonna instantly return false. Right, we're gonna instantly return false. And here we're gonna return true. There we go. Mm -mm. I'm gonna instantly return true. Okay, so let me actually go to the place where we compute all of that. So, and uh, 
k, all right, k is supposed to be equal to dy dx, right, and c is supposed to be equal uh, y1 minus dy uh, x1 dx, right. So, and that's how we compute all of that. So hopefully this is meaningful. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll see. Mm -mm. You implemented rising exceptions in C, where? What do you mean? Returning false? Is, th is that rising exceptions? Um, to some extent, you may say that exception is automation of handling error codes. Because what is an extent, exception, right? So imagine that you deep down into calls, right? Into like function calls and you throw an exception and what happens? Essentially, the call stack starts to unwind until you do a try catch, right? So what's interesting is that in C, you have a similar process. If, if each of your function returns a code, right? Some sort of a code that indicates whether the operation failed or not, right? And as soon as some operation down the call stack fails, because of the handling of this um, exit codes, essentially, uh, you simulate in the unwinding the stack until you try catch it, until you have an if which actually catches that. So I would say that exceptions are just basically automation of what we had in C uh, with exit codes, but in a more implicit manner, actually, in a very implicit manner. Um, Fortran Life, thank you so much for a two months of tier one subscription. Uh, right, so I'm not really sure if this function is gonna be useful because maybe I'll want to do something similar in here where I would first multiply by dy and only then dy by dx because doing this uh, thing like that actually preserves information. So maybe this entire function is, become, is going to become like kind of useless, but we'll see. Anyway, let's actually start with uh, computing the things. So we're going to start with k and c. All right, and I'm going to try to do uh, line. Of course, this one has to be a little bit. Uh, and uh, let me put this thing like so. So x1 and uh, yes, x2 and we just provide it like that. Mm, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. And if this thing is actually like that, that means that this stuff, uh, these two things mm, are located on the same... Oh yeah, so that essentially means that we have this kind of situation, right? So that's basically what we have. Which means that we should not even bother with like drawing anything. So that means what we have to do is just like this, right? Uh, yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interestingly. All right. So this one is fine. Mm hmm. So they're on the same line. Uh, all right. So now what I have to do is K 23 C 23. Hmm. Alright, so this is going to be 2, 3, 23, 23. So, and if this thing is fine, what do we actually do? What do we actually do? Mm -mm. So, if it's not okay, what that means that uh, that means that this and this are on the same line but this thing is below so that should never happen actually right so if this is false p3 
is the same as this one and it's less than P2. Right, which means that this stuff must be unreachable. Right, must be unreachable. I think, yeah, let's keep it unreachable. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we have a, a reachable situation essentially. Okay, so that's totally fine. And we can try to render the, uh, like the first half of the triangle at least, right? So let's quickly do that. Y is equal to Y1, then uh, Y2. There we go. Uh, so that means we need to find two axes, right? So, and the axes are gonna be um, rather interesting actually. So we need to have like X1 and X2, but uh, probably something like X1, 2, right? Because we also have to figure out the formula. Y is equal to uh, K multiplied by X plus C. So we need to infer uh, X out of that. So it's minus, minus c and then uh, divided by k, right, so this entire thing is divided by k. Uh, and by the way, this is a little bit complicated because k can be actually zero, right? Uh, k can be actually zero, and if it is zero, right, if it is zero, what do we actually do in this case? Uh, so that means they are like, aligned like so mm -hmm. um, mm -mm -mm. why is the same mm -hmm. I'm just thinking how I'm gonna be handling all of that what's the best way to handle all of that uh, it feels like what I have to do is just like check that they're not located in on any of the on any of the lines that's what it feels like x uh, not equal to x2 and y1 not equal to y2 right and then like this uh, but this sort of parameter like at least this thing is already checked in here uh, so maybe I should not think about it right now, right? So maybe I shouldn't think about it right now. Okay. So why uh, one two? Mm, actually, y minus uh, c one two divided by k one two. Right. So and then one two is two three, and we have these two axes, right? And essentially, what we have to do it just like depends on what x which x is which right so we probably have to do the following thing if x12 is greater than x23 we want to actually swap them right uh, we want to actually swap them x12 x23 right because i want x12 to be um you know smaller than x23 right which actually kind of alters their meaning right it kind of alters their meaning so Maybe I, I, I will just like do something like S12, right, S1, S2, S1, S2, then for X equal to S1, X less or equal S2 plus plus X, and there you go, we have X and Y, which means that we finally should uh, render the pixel, right, so we have to do pixels, y multiplied by width, uh, actually width plus x, equal to the color that we're filling in. Right, so that's basically what we have to do, but we have to be a little bit more careful. Right, so we need to check that y is within the available range, right. Uh, right, so it has to be something like this. And the same goes for the current x, if x is within the available range. Right. Cool. So uh, that is very very cool. <clears throat> so, but the problem is, I really don't like. 
what if k is like literally zero what if it's zero <laughs> excuse me um so i think i'm gonna actually remove this boolean uh, and make it void and since it's such a simple thing maybe it doesn't matter anymore if you know what i mean mm, but maybe it does so and essentially what i can do is x1 not equal to x2 and y1 not equal to y2 right so none of them are on the same well no so this thing can be actually vertical if you want to so that's totally fine i didn't think about that actually so it's totally fine if it is something like that all right yeah that is that is totally fine that is totally fine for them to be like on the same line like that so that means I shouldn't worry. I'm confused. So I'm gonna just like keep it as it is right now. <laughs> uh, if dx equal to zero, just return. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's try to render this entire thing and see how it goes. So we're gonna render that by uh, implementing the test, I suppose. Right? What do you think? Right. So let's actually quickly implement the test that renders the triangle. Right. So this is gonna be a simple function: test uh, field triangle. Uh, right. Void. And we're gonna define test case uh, test field triangle just field triangle so first thing i'm gonna do i'm going to fill the background right let's just fill the background and let's starting the the thing where i'm gonna be crafting the specific points of the triangle uh, so this is pixels uh, width height so what's going to be x in here uh, i think i want x to be at the uh, at the center right of the entire thing uh, but the y should be i don't know it should be like somewhere like this you know, I'm gonna start with just like literally drawing circles in there just to see where the points are gonna be located, right? So this is gonna be a uh, fill circle. Uh, I'm gonna put this thing in here uh, because I wanna first see those points before I'll try to render them, right? So the radius is gonna be, let's say 10 and the color is gonna be a red color, right? There we go. So uh, if I'm going to do build, um, I actually want to only record, right? I want to be able to record this entire thing because I want to be able to see uh, all of that stuff. So this is false. Okay, that's totally fine. So this is height. I suppose, yeah, it should be like this. Uh, height comparison of the integer expression so this is an integer i know that it's positive so it makes sense for me to actually cast it to size t right so uh, that should be fine so here i have to provide the type uh, that i'm actually swapping so i'm swapping in two places in here where is this second uh okay so this is like that and then i convert this thing to this thing so unreachable maybe i'm gonna just do a cert at least for now unreachable okay sort by triangle uh, okay finally 
so we generated field triangle let's take a look at this entire thing okay so we can clearly see this entire point so maybe i'm going to open uh, this stuff in fair right so this is going to be fair uh, test fill uh, triangle png uh, this one is going to be black all right there we go so this is the point uh, this is the first one and uh, now let me come up with the second one right let me come up with the second one the second one i want to put it somewhere here which means that in terms of uh, width is going to be width divided by eight but the height is going to be divided by two so it's kind of like basically symmetrical in here right as you can see it's basically symmetrical so if i run this entire thing can i okay so here it is so i just refreshed it everything seems to be fine um yeah so let me maybe put uh, the radius in here all right so it's going to be a radius because i want to be able to control this kind of thing i want to say okay make the radius five uh the thing i don't like about fair is that it resizes the um, the entire thing every time i refresh it right so which is not particularly convenient i want to keep it actually zoomed in right so as far as i know fair had uh some sort of a flag for that it's kind of interesting like like there's so many defaults in fair that annoy me and i always have to change them and i every time i want to run fair i have to put like a bunch of flags so i don't know if that's purely my problem right but if it's like that for everyone maybe your defaults kind of suck uh, but anyway so what i want you to do so this is fair and uh, i remember there was something about zoom uh yeah yeah switch image keep zoom viewport settings yeah there we go so let me uh, let me see keep uh zoom vp so there was another thing that i wanted to enable something about anti-aliasing but yeah that's fine all right so i think you disable anti-aliasing by doing something like this okay cool so test.c uh, might as well also put the color uh, somewhere here so this is a red color uh, this is a color i just want to test refresh thing right uh, there we go so it works fine it works fine cool so and i can go back to red hmm. nice so where are we gonna put the second point? I wanna put the second point somewhere here, uh, which means that in terms of width, it has to be width uh, divided by eight, but multiplied by seven, right? Uh, something like this, I'm pretty sure. So it's basically gonna put it, yeah, it's basically gonna put it on the opposite side, but it's gonna be the same for height as well, right? Divided by eight, multiplied by seven. Might as well actually swap them around to reduce the, the loss of precision, but I don't think it's that important in, in this particular case. So this is the triangle that I wanted to render, right? <clears throat> so this is the triangle that I wanted to render. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool. So now, mm, might as well actually assign all of them to their corresponding variables so because this one has to be x1 uh, x2 right this is not x2 y1 x2 uh, y2 x3 y3 mm -hmm. Gonna realign all of that stuff, and the reason why I want to align it like that because it makes it easier for me to do this, and then essentially this. Okay, so we have these things. I I'm not sure if I want to keep it like this. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So x1, y1. Okay, so this is 
one, two, three. Okay. So now let's try to fill the rectangle. Right. X1, uh, Y1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3, and the color, uh, let, let's use the same color, because why not? Let's use the same color, and let's see how miserably this entire thing will fail. Uh, right, it's a floating point exception, so that means there's somewhere a division by, uh, by zero, right? So there's somewhere a division by zero, which is totally fine. So let's actually go and try to sort of maybe debug that. Well, we can actually literally try to debug that. Right. So because I have a, a pretty cool debugger, I have a pretty cool debugger. So uh, Olive Field Triangle. Mm. I'm gonna do software gf, gf2, uh, bin test. Do I need to provide anything else? I didn't think I have to provide anything else. I have to do the record, right? So I'll have to do the record. So we can do the break. Oh, the thing about like gf that really, really sucks is that it doesn't support the clipboard. Like this, this is such a cool thing. But it just doesn't support the clipboard and it's just like baffles me because i quite often want to copy things like why doesn't it support that uh maybe i should actually implement that at some point and contribute i, I don't know but it's just like like do i really have to type all these stupid names myself like really are you serious it's just like the first thing that you need to have fill triangle okay so i want to break in here and then i'm gonna do a record uh, all right, so finally, uh, I'm not sure if you can see shit in this mist. You probably can't see shit in this mist, so I'm gonna actually move this entire thing in here. Uh, right, so you can at least see something because there is a watch window in here, right? Uh, we can have X1, X2, Y2, X3, Y3. So we have these kind of things. All right, so we sorted them. There are sorted in here. So everything seems to be okay. Uh, let's take a look. Key one, two, three. Can I, can I actually have two of them? No, I can't have two of them. Uh, I can have only one C12. So we did the computation and one of them actually became minus one, which doesn't really make much sense. Mm, how did it become a minus one? Mm-hmm. Which is, I guess, fine, right? So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, right, so key 23, C23. So this is the next one, more or less. Uh, one of, yeah, and one of the key, by the way, became straight up, um, straight up zero. Which again, doesn't make sense unless one of the x's are the same but are they the same x2 they aren't they aren't the same but only if y's are the same none of the y's are the same that's the problem they are not the same how did that become that y2 y3 y2 y3 they're definitely not the same but so the k should never become that uh, the k should never become that but it became so that means i need to like literally look into this thing uh i'll leave its line of segment um so yeah let's break Oh, I can actually click on some of these things. Can I? Can I? Can I click on them? Uh, can I restart? Uh, restart GDB. Yeah, yeah. So then I can. I can actually like click in here. So that's actually pretty cool. That's that's fine. Mm, all right. So. So we have a lot of these things. So this. Uh, all right. So. Uh, record. 
So we have that. Mm -hmm. So we probably also dx dy. Mm -hmm. K C. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Can I continue now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dx dy. Ah, this is precisely what I was talking about. Yes. So that's uh, this is what I was talking about in here. So maybe for something I'll want to do a similar thing like I did in here. Okay, so <laughs> I feel like I already I already had a similar bug before, and I remember actually debugging. Yeah, goddamn integer division. All right, so uh, I can see I can see what's going on. So that explains it. So because of that, I like I just don't want to have uh, a Libits line of segment, like a separate function, because like you never know how it's going to end up. Um, all right, so let's do the following thing. So this one is going to be something like this. If x1 is uh, not equal to x2, we're going to try to do this thing in here. So and that means we have to do dx12. Right, which is x2 minus x1, uh, dy2, like so. And instead of like k, we're gonna just like keep those things separate, right? So this is gonna be c, uh, right? So y1 minus dy12 multiplied by x1 divided by dx12, right? So, and we don't have to. And have to worry about that. So, so we are doing that like uh, manually over that. X two not equal x three, uh, and yeah. So let's copy paste this stuff here. Twenty three, three, twenty three, uh, three, twenty three, two, twenty three, two. 23. So all of these parameters are available. All of these parameters are available. Uh, so then, C. Uh huh. So this is Y, C13, and this K is essentially. Mm hmm. If you think about it, one two, it's a dy one two dx one two, which means that we're effectively uh, multiplying it like that and only then dividing it like that, right? So that's what we are effectively doing. Uh, and interestingly, because we rearranged everything like that, we don't have to think about like dy. Uh, being anything bad right so that actually that actually solves the problem automatically that actually solves the problem automatically I really like that uh, multiply by dy 23 dx 23 okay so that's very very cool all right because we're checking for these things to be zero in here yo yo that is very cool chat 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 that is actually very freaking cool i really like that what do you guys think uh what do you guys think i think it's actually very freaking cool mate all right so let's actually rebuild and what do we have and as you can see it didn't sec fault well it, it, it actually didn't sec fault before either it, it had like a floating point but yeah mm -mm. Hello, it's my first time. Can you tell me what keyboard are you using? I'm using a QWERTY keyboard. QWERTY, this one. Uh, 
And the reason why I'm using this old ass keyboard is because I just got used to it. So, yeah. I don't think it makes you a better programmer in any way. I think you can use whatever layout you want. Uh, so it's just like I happen to know only this one. Right. So, but it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. You can you can pick whatever keyboard you want. Uh, okay, so let's actually take a look if it uh, you know rendered anything, and it completely. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Like, where did it go? Uh, okay. So let me see. Mm, let me let me see. Let me see. So why with? Hmm. Well, it kind of worked. It just like didn't compute the axis properly completely. Hmm. It completely didn't compute the axis properly. <clears throat> the question is why? Where did I make a mistake? Uh, because here... Uh, Mm, so maybe I fucked up the order of these things. I wonder. No. Mm -mm. I need to rethink the entire stuff in here. Right, so this is what we have. dx, dy, and then we divide it. So this is x, this is y. Uh -huh. And this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Is this correct? Uh, I'm going to take a look at the line formula, like where we draw the line. Where do we draw the line? I don't see it. Okay, here it is. So dx dy. This is just dy. We take x. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I'm gonna just keep applying that. Sure. Um, why this one? Don't see any error in here. Okay, two, x three, x two, y three, y two, dy dx. I would like to swap them just to like to see a little bit more clearly, but it shouldn't matter yet again. So I know that y is less than y2, y1 is less than y2, so it's given, right? Because we're sorting everything by y in here anyway, so it should be like this. Um, so and then we check that it's within this stuff. Um, and yet again, y is equal to k multiplied by x plus c, right, so y minus c uh, divided by k. Ooh, I'm multiplying by k. I need to swap uh, this thing. If I'm actually like dividing by k, I have to like swap them like that. And this is where the problem may become uh, serious if dy okay so and i was actually v very happy thinking that it somehow solved this problem it didn't solve shit okay so i just like i didn't use the right formula <laughs> all right okay so now we should do the right thing but it's still vulnerable to dy being zero uh right so it's still kind of vulnerable to dy being zero but it didn't work anyway i wonder why Mm hmm Man, what the hell? Oh yeah, one three. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh yeah. So again, I'm super sleepy. <laughs> 
I, I wish I was not this freaking sleepy, but my sleeping schedule is just like shifted so much. Uh, I, I can't fix it. Like I just I just can't do anything about that. It's just so bad. Thank you, thank you so much, random user in the chat. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah. Well, I mean, okay. So all right, I'm gonna just just close everything. Mm. So is this like this one is one three? Okay, so this is quite important. Uh, one two, then one three. Mm -hmm. Um. So that means this has to be three, All right? This has to be three, and we're moving from. Y1, Y2, that makes sense as well. Oh, uh, right. Yes, finally, holy shit. So it is dangerous to do like this very detailed small work while being super sleepy, right? Because like you have too many um, um, special cases and you have to like keep the track of them and it's just like, yeah, so. Kind of, kind of bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we rendered like this part. Now we need to do the same thing for for this bottom part, right? So we need to do that for the bottom part as well. Uh, we can do it like this. Mm hmm. So P3, maybe I should make like a small break. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think I should make a small break and make a cup of tea or something like that. And after the small break, we're gonna continue all of that. All right, um, all right, so let's continue. Um, so we need to color the, the rest of the rectangle, right? So we need to color the rest of the rectangle. I would like to actually use like a different color. Uh, different color for these things um, for for the markers right so we can actually make something maybe uh, like a marker color, color uh, marker color and in fact I would like to put the markers behind the triangle well I mean they're already behind the triangle so we'll have to do something like this Mm -mm. Uh, thank you, Lars Feck, for two months. Let's break the paywall. I don't get any money. I don't have to answer your questions, but thank you. Uh, so. Get him. Mm -mm. So this is the market color, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, you can ask Jeffrey Bezos, he's the one who's getting all the money, so maybe he can tell you his preferences on these kind of things. I like to write code instead of talking about preferences. Talking about preferences does not get the freaking triangle filled in. Right. That's why you can never finish any of your pet projects. Anyway, I can't finish them either. Um, <clears throat> right, so this is going to be green color. Feeling triangle with preferences. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is what I want. <laughs> Spent so much time just doing that. Uh, all right, that's cool. 
now uh, triangle I'm still not quite sure what I want to do if um, dy is equal to zero right so what am I what am I supposed to do uh, I probably supposed to just like don't do that So if axes are the same, uh, we just move to the to the other stage. If y is the same, mm -mm. Mm, I think I know what I need to do. If y is zero. Right, so dy is zero, that means they have the same y. So that means in terms of x, it's the x of, it's x1. Okay, all right, all right. so th this actually makes sense. Uh, all right. Um, so if dy not equal zero, we just do that. Otherwise, I have to use x1. Right, and for that one, okay, so I, I finally, yeah, I, sh I should have sh just made the cup of tea, and uh, yeah, I finally found the solution for the dy being equal to zero. Okay, so that's actually very cool. Uh, dy 13 not equal to zero, right, and then this one is just x1. Okay, so that explains it, that explains it, right. Um, so, in terms of Mm. Is it? Why the same X? Yeah. Oh, all right. So that that's that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Mm. If dy equals zero, you skip looping over. No, that's not true. If dx equals zero, I skip. If dy is equal to zero, right? So for example, this one is on the same line in here, is that just means that I have to use the x of that one. I don't skip it. You don't skip it. You skip it if dx is equal to zero. You confused x with y. You confused coordinates. That happens. Don't worry about that. All right. <clears throat> You're a little bit confused, but you got the spirit. You, you got the spirit. Just a little bit confused. All right. So can we actually like check that somehow? Oh, that would be interesting, actually. So maybe I can just put two in here. I want to put two in here, and uh, yeah, there you go. So we we have a problem in here, for instance, right? It just does, doesn't even render anything, right? Maybe I'm confused. Who knows? <laughs> Well, I'm definitely confused, that's for sure. Uh, so, but at least we have to have something in here, right? At least we have to have something in here. But dy. Yeah, we're supposed to have something, but we don't have anything. That is extremely strange. And uh, let me go to the test. So here we had eight. So that's totally fine. Uh, if I make it maybe eight, but multiplied by two. Right. So yeah, we're getting closer. Three. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm going to actually split this into, I think. Mm -hmm. So let's keep it like that. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to split this into, I think, and just go to the tests. So four. So there should be some sort of like outer revert. Uh, yeah. 
and it stopped but if i move like this it is fine something for y being equal to zero um dy i mean in case of dy so yeah i see what's going on mm -hmm. i see what's going on so we have to reorganize the whole thing i suppose yeah i see yeah, damn. Uh, I see what needs to be done, I see what needs to be done. So we can keep these two things, that's for sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wonder if I actually substitute this thing. Ooh, this one is interesting. What if I basically in line this stuff right like so will that create something particularly useful right because that's rather interesting isn't it i think so this is going to be that and this becomes plus mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So we'll multiply by that, we we'll multiply by that, and when we multiply by that, effectively we cancel out this thing. All right. We cancel out this thing. Then we can uh, put this stuff like that. This stuff like that, and. Effectively, if we put this thing, we cancel out this stuff. What do you think? Did I do that correctly? I think... I think that's rather an interesting way of doing this. Let's give it a try. I have an interesting feeling that this may work. And it kind of actually explains that you just have... Oh yeah, so if dy is not equal to zero, it's just like you skip this entire thing and just leave x1. Huh. I wonder if this will work. This is really fascinating. Like, I'm a little bit afraid that it may not work, but if it works, that will be actually really progress. This would be really, really progress. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Ah, shit. Okay. So let's give it a try. And I just realized that I actually... Yeah, I got rid of this thing. And look at that. I think it works. To some extent, but I mean, uh, yeah, we need to go to examples. Not really examples, but rather tests. Right, and let's actually try this stuff. Uh, yep, it works. This is so cool. I actually simplified this entire thing. Uh, thank you, thank you, chat, for help. Yeah, okay, so that, that works and it simplifies a lot. Huh. And it actually, like, takes into account all the special cases that I wanted to have. Right, and look how elegant this is. Right, if it's equal to zero, we just basically assume that this entire thing is equal to zero. Mm. You know what I mean? That is really interesting. So we have the situation here where we explicitly define that division by zero makes this entire thing equal to zero. Look at that. Hmm. 
This is CPU. This is CPU. All right. Um, so uh, let's continue with the rest of the stuff. Uh, so I think I'm gonna actually iterate uh, from from the bottom. I think it makes sense to iterate from the bottom on here. Uh, P3, P2, and stuff like that. Uh, so interestingly enough, I can simply copy paste this entire thing, right? You can simply copy paste and just do three, two, right? Um, and this one is going to be three, two, three, two. And then we're going to have um, three, one, I suppose. Right. Three, two, three, one. One, two, three, three, two, three, one. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hold on. Now we are moving. We can actually move from two to three that's totally fine in my opinion uh clear place one two three two uh one three three one should be fine All right so it's pretty pokers it's pretty pokers isn't it but not really so here we have to use x3 then uh x3 Cool. And it didn't do shit, bruv. How dare you not do shit? Why it doesn't... Oh, okay, so this one is Y1, right? That means it has to be Y3 to actually make sense, I believe. Hell yeah. Look at that shit. We rendered triangle. Uh, and it was actually rather elegant, not gonna lie. I wonder, by the way. I wonder if you can generalize this entire thing, but to some extent. Yeah, we yeah, brother. Keep cool. Hmm. And again, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have like enough energy to like explain it in a more interesting way because I'm extremely sleepy right now, right? So it's just like my sleeping schedule shifted again that every time I stream, I just like wanna fall asleep. So yeah, <laughs> sorry, this is what it is. Uh, but we managed to do that. So, and, and I completely understand how it works. And I'm surprised that it's such an elegant solution. It's just like, yeah, so cool. Mm. <clears throat> so what we need to do now is we need to run some tests, I suppose, right? So. I mean, create some tests. Mm, might as well. So this one, I actually want you to, to make it like this, right? So, uh -huh. so this is that. Uh -huh. And I want to get a read of this thing. So we, we just only have a triangle. So it's a little bit weird in here, but maybe that's fine. Maybe that is fine, but it's just like, yeah. Okay, so let's try some other triangles. Oh. 
far, so this is some other step. Uh, I'm gonna be probably rendering those triangles on top of the existing one. Uh, right. So this one is gonna be green. And uh, for this one, I actually wanna put the width somewhere here, and the height is gonna be here. Then, width is gonna be that, height is going to be that. Then, width is gonna be that, but for the height in here, I'm gonna just put two. Right. So I'm gonna make the triangles overlapping. Right. Just a tiny bit, maybe. Uh, not sure if that's that much of a good idea, but... Uh, probably. Probably. I would like to multiply this by two, but this one by six. Right. So a little bit closer. All right. And, and maybe this one, I want to make a bit smaller. All right. So, yeah, something like this. And another thing I want to have is probably some sort of a right triangle. With a right angle, I mean. Um, so, This is width, and maybe um, in terms of like why this is going to be this, and this is going to be this. Then width is going to stay the same, but the height is going to be um, multiplied like by five, and then width here is going to be multiplied by five, but the height is going to be the same. The height is going to be the same, and this one is going to be blue. Right, this one is going to be blue. Yeah, there we go. Uh, maybe slightly smaller. Or maybe even I want to put this stuff a bit higher so I can see the angle of the red one. Well, that didn't really work properly. Um, so what I need to do is modify the height of these two things. Right. So yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe even three. But in terms of width, this one is gonna be like that. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Right. So just like a bunch of different uh, triangles for different cases. You know what I mean? Uh, so that looks fine. I really like that. So we can even try to... Yeah, we can start to doing 3D graphics, right? <laughs> because what we can do is just like take 3D points, right? 3D mesh, uh, project it to the screen and just rasterize it with these triangles. So, though we'll have to problem with the axis right so we'll have to reinvent the like old techniques of maybe z sorting or maybe using the depth buffer but the depth buffer is like oh that would be actually kind of kind of interesting like using depth buffer and shit but yeah. so and this thing may become the test case right so as i have this image it became a test case so that means i can do bin test and it actually tests this entire thing and if I, for instance, like make some sort of a mistake uh, in the implementation of the library somewhere, I don't know where, for example, I put one in here and uh, then in here, we'll just do the usual thing, right? right? So I'm going to try to recompile. Right, I'm gonna try to recompile. And as you can see, it failed, right? And we can take a look at the, uh, at the diff. Right, the diff is rather interesting. Right, so this is what happened. Uh, so something in here went wrong, and we can take a look at the uh, the original one. Huh. So this only gives the diff. So maybe we should also generate whatever was generated. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so maybe instead of like generating the failure, 
we have to generate something like this has to be called the div right this has to be called div and on top of that we're going to have uh, test field triangle actual like whatever was actually generated by the test so we can see right i think that will be actually kind of like useful in the future uh maybe this is something that i'm going to implement right now All right let me see how i can do that so it's somewhere in replace so we you... well what's interesting is that the f the diff already screws this thing up right so i'm gonna put it to do in here All right Uh, save uh, the actual image along with the div, right? So and then I'm gonna I'm gonna implement it off screen. Later. Um, what happened here? So let's quickly fix that. So let's actually remove this thing. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's do a commit, I suppose. So also draw a line. Yeah, it probably makes sense. But does it? Oh yeah, so I, I have it in here. Alright. Implement uh Fill triangle. There we go. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. So, so now we have the triangle rendering, which is rather cool. So yeah, we can do more things now. 